You're listening to the Superpower Podcast, Superpower Kids Edition, where author, philanthropist, and Superpower Kids founder, Neverly Rekla, inspires kids to discover their superpowers and change the world. Hi, kids. This is your Superpower Kid, Neverly Rekla. And today, I'm super excited for this interview. We're interviewing Susan Harrow. Did I pronounce that right? You did. <laughs> and she is the created she created Two Shield Verbal Self Defense Training. And this is gonna be an awesome interview. So we're gonna be talking with Susan today about awesome superpowers for girls. So without further ado, will you help me welcome our guest, Susan Harrow? Hi Susan. Hi Neva. How are you? I'm great. I love that this is about girls, too, because yeah. now is the time. I mean, we are having our time for girls, aren't we? Yeah. I mean, we're in the shining light of it. And now with all of the students organizing themselves, it's not just girls. Those, those are not just girls. But, you know, I just think it's really time for kids and students and girls to see what their powers are, because they might not even know their superpowers. Yep, I agree. It's time to find out what your superpowers are. Yes. All right. So speaking of which, what are your superpowers? I think my biggest one is curiosity. Uh, I would say that I really love knowing and understanding people. So some people might say I'm a little nosy. I've definitely been called nosy. Um, but I remember like when I was at, um, I was at this place called Maya Kaimas and I was really intrigued by this woman who was an artist. I was a little intimidated by her and I really wanted to talk to her. And when I started talking to her, I was just fascinated. And she leaned into me and she said, oh my God, you are not actually just waiting for me to stop so you can talk you're really listening to me. And I think it's kind of a lost art that we listen to each other without thinking about what we're gonna say or how we look or how we're coming across and really focus on 100% being in the moment with that person. And it sounds really obvious, but it's actually kind of rare. It's something that people always talk about like with the Dalai Lama. You know, it's his presence and people feel seen and understood and loved. Mm -hmm. And I think when we listen deeply and questions, um, people really get that. I yeah. agree. Yeah. I agree. So what advice do you, I'm reading my paper, what advice do you have for anyone or mostly girls if someone comes up and touches them in the boob area or their butt? Yeah. So the first thing is don't let anyone get that close. So start to be aware of your surroundings so you can see when somebody is approaching you and getting too close and you want to create that distance. So sometimes it happens, you know, so fast that we can't have done anything to it. So if somebody's hand is on your boob, like up here, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. You can grab their hand and twist their wrist and pull it off this way, like that. If it happens so fast and they've already grabbed you, then you wanna use your voice and say, no, stop it, let me go, don't do that. And use your eyes and use your voice and use your whole body to push them away and to make it clear that it's not okay to be touched. True, I agree. Or you could also use pinky grab. I saw that on your video. Yeah, the pinky grab. Yeah, I actually grabbed the whole hand, but you can definitely grab just the pinky and pull it because that's really – any girl can do that. It doesn't take strength or um, skill. So you grab sure. the pinky and, and twist it like this, and ow, 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 that really hurts. Yeah. Um, yeah. But also you have to make sure, like, to ask them first to see if they were doing it intentionally or if it was like they bumped into you, you know? You know, that's a judgment call. You're right. Like sometimes you go, oh, if somebody accidentally brushed your butt or your boob, you're not going to do that, right? Yeah. And so you can usually tell if it's intentional and exactly. if it's an accident or if they just pretended that it's an accident. Yeah. We don't want to let that go. If it's yeah, a you, yeah, you want to address it. Yep. Because I was watching um, the video the, mm. that you made about the pinky grab. Uh -huh. And if... 
because you you need to go gentle because if it's like a because you don't know if it's an accident because if it's right. like because if it's someone attacking you you can easily break their pinky that's, that's exactly right yeah, yeah but it's different if it's like a bump in you know you want to use the appropriate force necessary. So if it's a friend of yours and a guy who just did it, you know, to be funny, you know, you want to just, you know, make sure that it hurts a little. You obviously yeah. don't want to break somebody's finger in that case, just yeah. to get the message across. Yeah. So it's using common sense about that. There's not like only one way to do it. And that's one of the issues that's going on in the Me Too movement right now, right? It's like the, the, the punishment should fit the quote unquote crime. So it's not the same thing somebody accidentally brushing your boob as it is being sexually assaulted and sure. or doing something, you know, much greater than that. So we really need to take that into consideration and use our common sense. I agree. Because doing it because it they think it's funny, that's not okay. They deserve to, not okay. they deserve to know that. That's exactly right. And so that's more education mm -hmm. than it is like punishment that you're gonna call the police. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, so what, um, what advice do you have for people if a bully threatens them for some reason, like threatens them that they're going to hurt their family or hurt someone they care about? What advice do you have? Yeah, that's a great question because I think that happens more and more. One of the first things that you want to do is um, don't give it any energy. And that might sound counterintuitive, but the more that you engage, the more the energy is exchanged between you. Exactly. Yeah. So the less that you just like, even just ignore it, like you didn't even hear it. That's one of the most effective ways to stop because there's not any reinforcement from the bully. Because if they get any kind of reaction from you, whether it's positive or negative, that's still energy exchange. Exactly. So. Yeah, so, so ignoring, if you can, just, you know, you can even act like you didn't hear it. Just walk you know? away. Yeah, you don't even hear it. You didn't even know, you just walk away. That's it. Just keep, just go find one of your friends and talk to them. That's exactly right. That's a great point, too, to not just stand there. You don't just walk away or just turn away. You go and you do something, you go about your business, and you, you take your body and your mind and your spirit off into another direction that has nothing to do with them. Exactly. And um, I was watching a video and it was your video where you shared this story about the blind person who went in for a hug. Yes. At the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me of a time where there was this one woman who was attracted to my energy. Mm -hmm. And so she, whenever she saw me, she had to hug me. Mm. And I would give my mom a massage or hide behind her chair because like, being hugged all the time isn't that fun, you know? Like, <laughs> Especially with by people you don't know or you don't like that well, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but the I liked what advice you're giving. Just say, no, thank you, and you can walk away, or you can just walk back or do the, like, act like you're going to give them a handshake. Just go. That's right. Yeah. And that's creating the distance. And that's really important because like what you said, if you don't, it doesn't matter who it is. If you don't want it, you have every right to say no, even if it's you're a relative. Yeah. You know, if you don't want to be hugged by a relative in that moment, that is your right. And it's your body and it's your, um, your decision at all times. Even if other people say to you, oh, Neva, what's wrong with a little hug? Or... Yeah. It's your, it's your uncle, or it's your priest, or it's your teacher. You know, you can stand your ground and say, no, thank you. Yeah. Like, rather, if, yeah. like so, even if it's like your best friend or your... Even if it's or your best friend. Like if it's your cousin and That's everyone right. around and they go up to hug you and you go, no, thank you. I don't want to hug right now. Right. And everyone around you saying... Oh, why aren't you giving them a hug? They're your cousin. You, you don't, you, it's your right, your boundaries. You don't have to be hugged if you don't want to be hugged. 
And you don't have to give any kind of excuse either. Like you don't need to add anything. Once you've made your statement, like, no, thank you. Again, like you gave the advice to turn around and walk away, go do something else. Like don't hang around in that area to get into a conversation. Because again, that's an engagement in energy. Once you've said your piece, go off and do what it is you yeah. want to do. So you don't have to continue the conversation. I agree. Cause like, Saying no to them and then trying to speak with them, that's just like, wait, what? It's kind of no. confusing. It's setting off an energy like you didn't want to hug them, but you want to talk to them. You know? Right. And it gives them the opportunity to like, uh, you know, to chepper, the word chepper you or to bug you or to tease you or to keep on doing that in the same vein. It gives them another opportunity. And what you're doing is just cutting off the opportunity. There is no further opportunity. You can even, if you're thinking about like, you know, when you start to really feel it, you can pull your energy in. So, you know, you can push your energy out and you can pull your energy in once you start to become aware of that. When you're like, um, you already know how to do it. Like when you're meeting a friend that you really love, you're very open and you're already sort of connecting with them. It's that yeah. feeling that you're doing yeah. with people. So you already know how to do that. And if you're scared, you know, our energy automatically gets pulled in. So start to notice that and how you're and how you're, you are using your energy even in a situation like that, because you can just pull it right in and pull it right back and then use your body and your everything and just walk away. Yep, I agree. So I think we have to take a quick break, but okay. we've been talking with Susan Harrell about awesome superpowers for girls. We'll be right back. Are you here to change the world? Do you talk about things like vibration, frequency, awakening, and consciousness? Are you pretty sure you have superpowers? The Superpower Net is unlike normal coaching programs and conscious communities. We provide training, intuitive guidance, peer-to-peer -peer learning, intensive one-on-one -on -one coaching, and a high vibrational network of people just like you. When you join the Net, you get 24-7 access to a collaborative group of people who support you as you master your personal power and unlock your superpowers. If you are ready to use your superpowers to change the world, then join the Superpower Net today. Visit superpowerexperts.com slash the net to learn more. Okay, we're back and we've been talking with Susan Harrell about awesome superpowers for girls. And we were talking a little bit about boundaries and personal space. And I think it's really important that you have boundaries, like knowing your own boundaries and knowing what's okay with you yeah. and what's and respecting others. Like if you respect others, they'll they're probably going to respect you. That's right. I think that's really right, and that's such a great point. Knowing your own boundaries. Sometimes we don't know our boundaries until they've been crossed or we've crossed them. You know, so that's part of an experiment and that's okay. Like sometimes you go, you know, I really wish I didn't let that person hug me. Okay, now you know the next time, what are you going to do differently? So don't you, don't beat yourself up. You go, oh, I noticed I let that person get in a little close. Next time I'm going to be a little bit more aware and I'm going to be able to head that off. So it's a learning process. You know, Neva, just the other day, like I'm always learning too. I had just come back from Aikido and I was opening the trunk of my car to put my hakama, the skirt that we wear in Aikido, into the trunk. And this guy came up to me. It was night. And this guy came up. He was on the sidewalk and said to me, can I ask you a question? And I'm immediately a little bit on my guard because I don't know him. It's nighttime. So I look around, you know, make sure there's no other people around. And I say, okay. Now, that was my choice because he didn't appear threatening. And then he asked me out. I wonder if you'd like to go to dinner with me. And it was kind of odd, you know, and I was like, oh, no, thank you. You know, and he continued the conversation. So I really wished I would have just stopped the conversation at no thank you and gotten in my car. But I was caught a little off guard. And I actually listened to him for a little bit longer when he explained he'd like to get to know me, blah, blah, blah. And I just said, you know, thank you for asking and no thank you. And then I got in my car. But it took those two times. And then I thought, well, next time, what would I have liked to have done? I would have liked to have said no thank you, close the trunk of my car and just gotten in. Mm -hmm. Very pleasant, you know, because he was, he was a nice, seemed like a nice person. So there's no, there was no reason to be harsh in that situation. And I could have just been clear and said that. So now I, you know, so I'm educating myself too. 
Yep, I agree. Um, actually, I want to share a quick story about. Okay. Um, so, I I have two friends that like to take me and a friend of mine who's my the same age as me, eight, and we went to the zoo, and I was um, and we were just chilling out at the zoo, and then he came up and grabbed my butt. And it took, I didn't say anything at first because I'm not very good at doing, saying stuff. Um, You're not good at doing what stuff? Like saying stuff that oh, uh-huh. was like back off. Hmm. Um, but it took me like 30 minutes or so. And once we finally, because he kept on touching me, he kept on like poking me and grabbing my butt and stuff. And when we were all um, taking a restroom break, I finally decided to say something because it was getting annoying and it's my body. And I said, don't touch me again. And he threatened to touch me again. He got up from his seat and he threatened to poke me. And I, and I was standing and I just stepped back. Mm-hmm. And I was giving off the energy saying, back off or I will tell someone. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's important to know your boundaries. Like, I agree what you were saying earlier. Like, if you don't necessarily know your boundaries, you might know them once they get crossed. And I have the regular boundaries, like don't touch where the bathing suit covers. Or Mm -hmm. don't, if you you touch me and I say no, stop. And if you keep going, know that I, I do have the right to hurt you. That's exactly right. That's very sensible. Yep. Because, like, it's different. Like, if someone keeps on poking you and you say, please stop poking me, and you start off polite, and then they keep on doing it, then you say, I said don't poke me. And after a while, where it gets to the point where you say, stop, then I feel like you have the right to hit them, you know, like to hurt them or go tell someone. Those are your options. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's you have the option to deal with what that, whatever you feel is right in that moment. Whether, okay. Yeah. And, and sometimes you can let them know, you know, I'm going to tell so-and-so this is not appropriate. I've asked you to stop. Yep. And um, there are consequences. And, and you want to let them know that there'll be consequences, whether mm-hmm. it's telling a parent or a teacher or whoever that is. And also, you're right, in the consequence, it might be that you grab their finger and and twist it a little bit if that was yeah. appropriate in the in the moment yeah to get them to stop mm-hmm. i agree because it's like because i wouldn't like it's if they go get their parents and say i'm gonna tell you to my parents and they're you're gonna get you in huge trouble i so if one of my things i tell my friends is if they're scared that a total stranger or their friend's parents can tell them what to do, I look at them and say, I don't listen to people unless my parents have gave them permission to -hmm. tell me what to do. And then they're like, oh, you're right. They can't tell me what to do. Because, like, and that's why it wouldn't bother me if they went and got their parents, you know? Because you can simply just walk out, walk away. That's one of the biggest things is if someone is bugging you, just leave. Take your energy, your spirit with you and leave. Go that's find true. someone else. Mm-hmm. 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 That's, that's an excellent, that's a, that's a great point, um, Neva. And also, um, you know, I love that you said, you know, you don't have to listen to anyone else's parents or a stranger because they don't have the power over you yeah. unless you're like unless you've spoken to your parents like you said and you know that that's something that um and even then you know that doesn't mean that that adult is always right you know that's something that you would want to check in with your parents about oh yeah. so and so's parents said wanted me to do this and i complied and do you agree with that did you give them permission and you might even want to just call your parent on the spot to check it. So that's your ultimate right as well, you know, Mm -hmm. to, to check in with your parents on the spot. And I think also that comes to a point about who do you trust? Exactly. I was just going to say that. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. So it may be someone else's parent, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you trust them. Yeah, just like, because they're an adult doesn't mean that they automatically earn your trust. Yeah. Like, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. like my friend's parents, just because I'm over there for a day or something, doesn't give, like, if I meet them and we've known each other for like a week or so and we decide that we can hang out at their house, doesn't give me the right, doesn't mean I have to immediately trust their parents. That's right. Because, like, I like being polite if people are watching me or I have a babysitter or something because I know they're in charge and I'm supposed mm -hmm. to listen. But if it's, if I'm out in public and I'm somewhere that I, I'm okay, I, and I know that there's everyone around me is watching, I I stand up and I say, and I tell my friends, no, they can't tell me what to do. You they can you can choose to listen to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's your choice. But That's right. my choice is to move on with my day and do what I'm doing. Right. So even let's take an example. Like let's imagine you said you were shopping or you were at the mall or whatever. Let's imagine that you were trying on <laughs> your shirt and you didn't you wanted to have privacy. And if that person's parent said, I want to be in the dressing room with you, you would have every right to say, um, I appreciate that. And I prefer to be, um, I prefer to get undressed by myself in private, you know? So, and then I would stick to that, even if they insisted, oh no, I really want to make sure that, you know, this fits you before you buy it. And you can say, um, I'm happy to come out and show you. So you can offer like a juicy alternative you know, okay, I'm happy to come out of the dressing room once I've got my clothes on so you can see how this fits and I'll make the decision whether I want it or not. So that's another thing to consider is offering an alternative. Um, so what it's if they keep on telling you? What's that? If they keep on telling you, like, mm -hmm. no, I insist, I have to come in with you, you can simply say, no, I want my privacy. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to give it to me, we can live. We can leave. That's right. That's right. So there's another there's another alternative there. And um, yeah. And so, yeah. So I always think about how can both in that kind of a situation, how can both people be satisfied? Like, you know, maybe the parent has another mode of meaning that they want to keep you safe, that they want to make sure nobody else goes into the dressing room with you. We don't know. And, and so that's where the curiosity comes into. You can even say in that situation, I'm curious why you would like to be in the dressing room with me. Just exactly. so, because you, we can't assume, we don't know. And they might go, well, I don't know. I'm always going in with my daughter. And you go, okay, well, that's great. And I'm not your daughter, you know? Yeah. And you can simply say, you can stand right outside my dressing room and guard it. That's right. And I, if the if the clothes do not fit, if I, and they're not comfortable, I will tell you. I will yes. come back, get dressed, <laughs> and we can leave. That's right. That's right. So, yep. yep. Exactly, because privacy is really important. Even if people are saying, like, if even if you're like in a changing room or someone else is watching you, that doesn't give them a right to come in with you if you're yeah. if you or want the shop person. It doesn't give the shop person the right to to you know go in there either if they're just because because you're um, you know because child. of your age. Yeah, because if you're a child or you're a teenager, that does not give them the right. You know so. So you, you want to be always aware of what feels comfortable to you. If you get any kind of twinge in your gut, like, I don't like this, to listen to that, really. Even if it's tiny, 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 even if it's just like a feather over your head, listen to that. Because that's our body smartness. That's our body, um, what's, the, that, what's the word? It's our, it's our body smart. You know, our bodies are smart. And we want to rely on that and really respect. Yeah. That and and continue to grow that because that's what keeps us um, safe and alive and that's the juicy part of us like our intuition and and uh, that so that comes even before like language right exactly and even if you're like out shopping on your own and you're in a changing room and someone is bothering you and like they keep coming in 
and just like if it's like a curtain changing room where you yes. can't walk and they keep coming in and keep saying hi and you can simply get dressed come out and go find someone that looks trustable and find someone like a maybe even a cop because there's always cops in like the malls and stuff go find them and say excuse me this person is invading my privacy why i'm trying to try and close that's right. So if that's what you're in a situation like the person has repeatedly crossed your boundary and not respected your boundary, then you have every right to go to the next person in authority, whoever that is, and and create a consequence for yeah, that. I, yes. Because mm -hmm. um, I find some people, because of my age, they mm -hmm. treat me like a child, even right. though I, I'm eight. And they don't know how mature I can be. And so they um, treat me like how most tri children are treated. And I find that it's important that you go get like your parents or someone that knows you for sure. And then say, hey, this person is bothering me. Can you come and deal with it? That's right. Yeah, that's right. If you're not getting results, you want to escalate it. Yep. If yeah. you're not getting the Respect. The, result, the respect or the result that you want, mm -hmm. you want to escalate it. You and you have every right to do that. Exactly. Um, it doesn't matter what age you are, even if you're five or four or three, you know, um, at any age, at any age, your your body is your body and your face is your, your own face and all of that is um you you always have the right to speak. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um so I was curious on how you got the idea on how to teach girls about what happens if someone comes up and grabs them or what I was curious on how you came up with that idea. I came up with the idea because I've been media training uh, women and girls for the past almost 28, almost 28 years when I've been wow. first, I was a publicist and now I'm a media trainer. And what I noticed is that so many women had the quote unquote, the disease to please, and also that they couldn't speak up for what they wanted and that they consistently let people take advantage of them, whether it was just crossing a boundary or something much more serious, or even, you know, in the case of publicity, like what we're doing now, yeah. um, if they, um, for example, like you, let's imagine you wanted to read a bio and you created a bio and talked about me and I didn't like the way that you presented me, I have the right to say, you know what, Neva, I prefer that you say this instead exactly. of that. Yeah. Yeah. And so what I noticed is that um, people your mom's age, my age, older, you know, any anywhere 18 and older, didn't feel comfortable expressing themselves. And so I thought, I want to start with girls like Neva's age, 8, 10, 12, and start saying, <laughs> let's learn it now. Let's learn how to speak up and out. So by the time we get to be 12, 14, 16, 18, we're really comfortable establishing our boundaries, speaking out, protecting ourselves if we're in danger, and preventing any kind of assault, but also preventing any kind of um, being taken advantage of or not speaking up in the moment or as soon as we know. Like when you were talking about um, your friend who was poking you, like you didn't say anything in the moment. That's okay because you just, you, you couldn't for whatever reason. And then later you're like, okay, now I need to bring this up. So it's about shortening that cycle like okay it took you you know maybe 10 minutes and a half an hour to do it and then maybe next time he gives you one poke or one grab on the butt and you're like no you know so that's the part of the practice and even if next time you get three pokes you know uh, say no. instead of yeah instead of 10 you know no. it's that's fine so it's whenever you learn to speak up it's the important thing is to start to speak up and to make a habit of it <coughs> and to start to just grow your awareness at all times mm -hmm. of um, making sure that you say what you want, that you speak out, and that you're doing what you want. Because only one person has control over your, your words, your thoughts, and your actions. And nobody else has control over your thoughts either. Those are all yours. So your thoughts, your words, your actions, that's all you. And that's exactly. the, those, that is what you have control of. You don't have control over somebody else's behavior or how anybody treats you. You only have a choice of your response, whether it's mental, physical, verbal. Exactly. Yep. And one of the things my mom and I talk about it a lot is I talk about 
some like how I my space has been invaded. And oh, your space has been invaded. Uh huh. And I talk to her about that because I always share my stories with my parents. Like if I've been bullied, I come back when my parents have time and when I like at the end of the day and I say this is what has happened. And then I talk a lot about like say if I don't know you very well or even if I do and I don't want you to be in my space, stay at least a foot away from me. Mm-hmm. And I talk about my space, your space. Because mm-hmm. it's really important to ask for what you want and say, okay, this person is clearly getting on my last nerve and is touching me. You can clearly speak up and say, can you move? Can you get out of the way and yeah. stop touching me? Exactly. And like what you said before, you create the distance. So the exactly. so you notice, okay, this person keeps moving in too close. So now you know that you need to start moving back all the time or moving sideways or going into a different direction or putting your hands up, whatever that is. So you can prevent that. So if somebody's starting to reach into you up with your hands or moving their hands out of the way, so you can start to notice what the appropriate action is. And um, yes, you want to address their behavior, but your behavior is the most important. Like even if a teacher is starting to, you know, touch your hair or something like this, you can move back and say, and then say, you know, please don't touch my hair. Right. Or and I don't want you to touch me anywhere, actually. So you can, you know, extend it out to anything without my permission. So if you want to touch me, please ask me first, even if it's exactly. my hair, my, a, a hug, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. Because um, also what my mom and I were talking about earlier today is if it's a little kid or someone mm-hmm. who's like touching you and grabbing you and stuff, I um, I was choosing. I was choosing to give my friend the benefit of the doubt because yeah. he, because he's still little, like he's still a child. So he's still learning what I'm okay with and what, what girls are okay with. And I think that's important to give people the benefit of the doubt because sometimes people don't do that. And it's important that you say, okay, this person might still be learning about what's okay with me and what's not, you know? That's so right, you know, because, and we don't ever want to assume, like we don't want to assume ill intent, especially with somebody, like you said, who's, who's just learning, but people are learning at any age. I mean, even, you know, an 80 year old is still learning and not maybe doing something that you feel is inappropriate, right? So it's, it's any, at any age, you give the benefit of doubt unless proved otherwise, unless it's obvious that it's, that it's a malintent or that it's absolutely something that you don't want. But in that case, education first is the best thing because don't we really need to start educating our boys exactly. on what's okay with us, what's not okay with us. Um, exactly. So boys your age, you know, it's, it's start the education process now and, and start to have all of your friends be in unison. Like, what's okay with you? And really start to think about that. Like, the more, I think it's really, there's a lot of power in groups too, Neva. Like, really gather your girls together and go, hey, what do we think is okay? Is a butt touch okay? Is a poke in the ribs okay? You know, what do you guys think? And, and do we need to start really, as a unit, start to really start educate these boys and say, this is okay. This is okay. Sometimes, you know, this is never okay. Like, it's never okay to walk by and grab my boot. Right. So, um, but, but poking and teasing, you know, that's up to you guys and that's up to the situation. And it may be okay with one of your friends and it may not be okay with another friend. And that's exactly. part of the education process, I think, between people and communication. And I definitely that's- think, um, and girls do it all the time as well. Like, oh, you're right. And girls. Oh, you're absolutely right. Oh, yeah. So it, it's not just cross. Absolutely. It's your friends yeah. too. They might do something that you yank your hair or whatever that, whatever that is. If you don't like it, speak up. Yep. You're absolutely exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, my mom and I were talking about like, um, what if there's these little girls who are going around trying to kiss this one little boy oh. and he's thinking <laughs> and it's not okay. It's yeah. like, yeah. no, don't. No, don't. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, right. Like we're thinking, 
and we're talking about maybe he doesn't like girls. Maybe he likes boys. Right. You never know. And maybe he just doesn't want you to kiss him. Exactly. Maybe he doesn't like kissing or you don't know. Yeah. Yeah, So, right. Oh, I I love that you're talking to your mom about all this stuff too. I think it's great if you can talk to your parents about this and open a conversation around it. You know, all of you out there to start talking to your parents and just have um, like what Neva's doing is doing role play you know, to like explore situations. What if this, what if that, like here I do it. And you can actually play it, you know, with the verbal self-defense course for girls, the most important thing is actually doing it. It's not reading about it or thinking about it. It's actually doing it, using your voice, using your action and actually putting it into action. And that's one of the things that we're missing because then you don't know what to do in the moment because you've never had it done and you've never done it. So if you've never shot a basket, you know, you don't know what it feels like to poof get the basket into a ball into the basket. Yeah. So to role play that with your friends, to role play that with your parents is super important to get it ingrained in your muscle and mental memory. So when yeah. it happens on the playground or in the classroom or wherever it happens um, or in your home, you know, then you have the instant reaction that, that you want and you start to get skilled at that. That's super important. I agree. And one of the things you can do is in the moment, so you don't go home and think, thinking to yourself, why didn't I ask them if they came up and grabbed me? Why didn't I ask them if they intentionally did it or if they didn't? Because you can simply just ask and say, and if they don't answer, and if they answer and it's like a way that sounds kind of fishy and they're not adding on to the truth, you can simply say, I don't know if you're really telling me the, the whole story right now. Mm-hmm. And, and cause I feel like you never need to immediately assume cause immediately assuming like if your friend bumps into you on the subway and they accidentally like touch you, you, it like you could really hurt their feelings if you say, hey, because I'm automatically assuming that's, it's not okay and it's not um, nice to your friends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's perfectly okay to say to them, hey, did you bump into me on purpose? Yeah. If so, you know, it'd be great to say I'm sorry, Mm -hmm. you know, and to not do it, to make sure you don't do it again. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, Actually, um, I want to share a video I watched. Oh, okay. Uh, um, so it was one of the videos you made about what to do if someone asks you to get the coffee. Mm. And I watched that. And even though I don't go to work, <laughs> I still watch it. <laughs> you will soon enough. <laughs> um, but I loved how you're talking about don't give off the appearance of someone who's going to get something for someone. Like, Give off, like, if you're slouching and you're acting, like, tired, like you've been getting things for people all day, people might assume that you're going to get them something. So acting tall, and I love I loved how you're talking about posture. And posture is one of the, um, is kind of, like, giving off energy. Like, if you're slouching, that's giving off, like, Oh, I'm so tired, energy. But if you're standing up tall, that's giving people the energy that you're excited and you're excited to be doing what you're doing today, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, and that's a practice too, you know, because some people, um, you know, have that um, demeanor, you know, they have that demeanor that they can be pushed around. I I remember teaching at the UC, um, at, uh, it, was, it was in the University of California system. And this woman was a manager. And she said to me that, you know, everybody was always, always asking me to make copies and coffee. And she was a manager. And, and she was kind of like, she's kind of like this and kind of like, you know, a little squished in. And I said, um, you, you look like the coffee girl, you know, because you know, <laughs> so what can we do to change that? You know, exactly. so you're right. it's partly posture and it's also the way that you feel about yourself to make the decision exactly. that you're not coffee girl and that you're not going to get anybody coffee anymore. And that, you know, um, what did one gal say to me just the other day, um, 
she said, uh, oh my God, now I can't remember, but it was a really great response to the to coffee. She said, is your, and this, you know, this is the way that you can respond to. I mean, this is something that it's, again, it's person dependent, but she said, is your hand broken? <laughs> make you spit up your water <laughs> oh I remember that it was at a party in Philadelphia she said she was she was in um IT you know one of the few girls and women in IT at that time yeah yeah and she said is your hand is your is your hand or your arm broken and he was like so startled so that's a great general response right so <laughs> oh my gosh yeah. Is your yeah. hand broken? Is your hand broken? And then he never asked her to get coffee again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah. You could also say, are, like, can you knock it up? Are you stuck yeah. to your chair? Any kind of response like that, you know? But, you know, so like you there's not just one way to do it is what I'm saying. Use your own creativity. Sometimes it's humor. Sometimes it's a little bit of a sarcastic slice. You know, <laughs> yeah. appropriate, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, that, that's funny. Yeah, <laughs> that way to make you spit up all over yourself. I tried my best to go. <laughs> well, that's funny, though. Yeah, that's a good response to say. Yeah. Are you So it's a, there's an endless way to respond. We've just talked about a few, but it's yeah. really, there's an endless, you know, use your creativity. And again, sometimes humor is the best thing because, uh, and then again, you know, you don't, you if in that situation that, you know, you don't, you just go about your business right after yeah. you've said it, you know? Cause yeah. like, if you go from a way of like humor, it's like, it makes them like, Oh, they're right. I can simply just get up. Yeah. Take a pause. Yeah. Pause whatever I'm doing and get myself coffee. Yeah. And what happens when you use humor is it's, it's a, it's called a, um, it's called a, Oh my God. Now I, I can't remember for a second. Uh, it's a pattern break. So anytime that you laugh, you create the, um, you know, the, the good, the endorphins in your head. And so it shifts the energy like on the spot. Yeah. So if you laugh about it, then you can't like be mad at that person in the same moment, you know? Yeah. So it's a great way to just shift the energy in a second. Yeah, exactly. And then you can just go about your day. Yep. Cause, um, we talk about a lot in my house. No one can actually do anything to you. Mm -hmm. So we talk about, like, if that person who, let's say he did get irritated and tried to demand for her to get her coffee, him coffee, he, like, he couldn't have, she could have chose to get irritated. And fighting violence with violence is never going to work out. That's right. So she could have chose to get irritated. Or she could have just simply said, no, I'm going to go about my day. You figure something else out. You ask someone else who's going to be willing to do it. Exactly. Yeah. So you're saying that you always have the choice, even if you don't think you do, that you have the choice over your own thoughts and your own behavior. Yeah. I agree. Sometimes it's just like taking that breath because sometimes you might want to say something mean and you might want to close your mouth when you do that, you know, yeah. right? you know, so close the mouth. I have an Italian temper, you know, so my philosophy is when I'm angry, I close my mouth and I might leave the room because you can't ever take that back. Exactly. That's the you can't take your words back. People go, oh, I can apologize. But sometimes that, you know, dagger to the heart stays in the heart forever. And you can't it's take not that gonna work. back. Yeah. Exactly. It's super important to be impeccable with your word. Yep. And I actually um, think that posture and giving off like a strong, tough energy is a best is one of the best ways to um, pe to have people stop touching you or, or right. grabbing you. Because mm -hmm. if you give off like an intimidating energy, they might not want to go near you. They might want to still speak to you. They're probably not going to, they you probably have less of a chance for them ever thinking it's okay to come up and grab you or, mm -hmm. you know, because um, one of the things that people do sometimes is they, if they see a friend, they'll rush up and hug them. Mm -hmm. And then 
sometimes maybe that friend's in a bad mood today. Or maybe that friend, like, or maybe they got in a fight. So, um, I feel like it's important don't go up and hug someone immediately as well. Because, like I was saying before, don't treat people how you want to be treated. So, And you also bring up a great point of awareness. Like, you want to notice, is your friend in a bad mood? Do they not feel like a head? And they, are they in a bad mood and do they need a hug? Or are they in a bad mood and they don't want a hug? You know, exactly. part of that is your observation and respect for that person, right? Because you could easily walk up to them and say, hey, how's yeah. it going? And if they answer like, I just found out that I don't get to go to Disneyland today. Yeah. Then you could, maybe then you say, okay, how can I help you? Mm-hmm. Do you want a hug? Mm -hmm. Do you want me to go get you a snack, some water? Mm -hmm. Do you want me to tell the teacher? And Mm -hmm. then, Mm -hmm. or if they're in an excited mood and they find out that they do get to go to Disneyland, then that's probably a good time to hug your friend. Yes, it probably is. And you can, you know, you can send the invitation. You start to open your arms and if somebody starts to back away and you start to move in, so you don't just rush up and just do it. You know, you can give the invitation, right? Like sometimes if I'm wanting to hug somebody, I will open my arms first and see if they move toward me. If, is it okay? Are we going to meet in the middle, right? That's the invitation. And if they don't take the invitation, um, like I got a massage from a new guy the other night or, you know, a healing and I didn't really want to hug him afterwards. And so he was waiting for me to say, are we going to shake hands? Are we going to just speak? And I could see that he was waiting for my cue, you know, which I really appreciated, you know. Um, and I just wanted to say, you know, thank you very much. I didn't really want any more physical contact. And and that's fine. It's not an insult. It's just that that's what I was feeling in the moment. And that's what I was feeling about him. So it's not like of my rule. It was just like, that's what it was in that moment. Exactly. And, um, and I also find that if someone doesn't want to hug you, don't take it personally. They no. might, they just don't want to hug you right now. They could easily be in a awesome mood 30 minutes from now, and they might want to give you a thousand hugs. Can, mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so never take anything personally. And, and it's really hard for a lot of people. It's hard for me. <laughs> you too? Yeah, me too. Me too. It's really hard. So that's also, um, that's also something to really practice is like looking at ourselves like, what, are we, what kind of story are we telling ourselves? Like, exactly. that's a, is that a story? Do we have proof? You know, and can we verify that with the other person, you know, or I, my feelings were hurt or I felt, you know, sad that you didn't want to hug me. And then they can say, um, oh, God, I was just in a really bad mood. I didn't want to be touched by anybody. And I still love you. You know, I just didn't want to be touched in that moment. You know, exactly. so you check in with your person, your people too. But yeah, you don't take anything personally. And oh, man, that's probably the biggest lesson of all time. Yeah. Don't take anything personally. Nothing. And um. People who don't want to be hugged, don't send out the vibe that you're mad at that one friend. Because yeah. they could really take that like a like a dagger to the heart. And that could mm-hmm. that could really interrupt your friendship. And so give it on a way out as like I'm in a bad mood right now. Can we hug later? Mm-hmm. And then it lets them know okay, you don't feel like it right now, but you're going to be fine in an hour. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or wait, can, can I check in with you in an hour? See how you're doing. Maybe you want to hug then, maybe you don't. Well, either way is fine. Exactly. Yeah, either exactly. way. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I agree. So um, kids and teenagers, people who are out there listening, just don't take anything offensive and... Um, if you ever get touched in a way that seems inappropriate to you, ask, don't assume. And do you have any more advice or do you have a question for me? Yeah, because I, I mean, we're, we're talking about like kind of nice things, but what if somebody says, you know, hey, Neva, that is such a gross color of your hair, you know? So that happened to me. It did. <laughs> it did. So my parents and I were driving to Burning Man. That's uh-huh. why I 
um, my mom shaved her head, and my oh. dad dyed his <laughs> um, his beard the same color of my hair. Uh-huh. And we, it was a 14-hour drive. Oh, a long time. And so we took a lot of breaks. And this one woman, and we are at, we stopped at, like, a, um, you know those, like, gas shops and stuff? Yeah. They ha- it had a restaurant in it. So we stopped there, and it was, like, a fast food restaurant. And the woman who we were ordering to said, why couldn't have you dyed it pink? And I think to myself right then, well, I didn't say anything, but I thought to myself right then and there, because I didn't want to dye it pink. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like, because it, I like the color pink. It's a cute color. My cup's pink. Uh-huh. That's but I, I don't have to dye my hair pink if I don't want to. And I was thinking to myself, what a bizarre question. She obviously can see that I have not dyed my hair pink, that I don't have interest in dyeing my hair pink right now. So why did she ask that? Yeah, because if it's her worldview. So that's, you know, so when somebody insults you, because I think that lots of times when people insult you personally, we tend to take it, we take it much to heart. You know, or I, you know, you've got a big fat nose, you've got a big fat butt, whatever that is. And then you want to assault them. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when, you know, you just want to think that's when you don't want to take anything personally and say, that's their problem or that's, but that's the way they're thinking. It really doesn't have anything to do with me. Like she doesn't know, like you, what you said, she has no idea that I love pink, but I felt like doing green for this trip, you know? So, and it's none of her business, you know? So, right. I could have simply just said in that moment, I didn't want to dye pink. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Can I please order them? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Change or the you could have actually even ignored it. Like you didn't even hear it and say, I'd like a hamburger, <laughs> you know, or, exactly. or fries or whatever that is. So you have the choice also as a girl, I want to tell you, you have a choice of completely ignoring when somebody addresses you as well, which, you know, that's some kind of a really hard thing to do. Yeah. But let's get in the habit of if we don't want to even address it, we don't even want to give it even any any, any kind of um, response that we have every right to just go about and, you know, state exactly what we want in that moment or why we came there to order food. And we don't even need to give it any energy at all. If we exactly. I love how you were saying um, in your video that, Men don't listen, pretend they didn't hear a single word yeah. we said. That's right. Why can't we? I'm, right. I love I that. I learned that from men. I learned it because, and I, I mean, my sweetie still does it. And I'll say to him, did you hear what I said? You know, and, and he'll say, yes. And I say, well, I didn't get any kind of acknowledgement of that. You I, know, I you know, that wanting mm, or whatever. So I said, I don't think that you even heard me. And it's like, no, he just didn't want to address it. And men, we're so used to that. And we let them get away with it. And I thought, well, that's a great technique. I'm going to use it myself. Yep. And I was actually, I ask my parents that all the time. I'm like, did you hear me? Because sometimes I don't feel heard. Like they won't Mm -hmm. nod. They won't say, yeah, I agree, Neva. And I'm like, did you hear me? (laughs) And, And I feel like it's important, like, yeah, like, in that situation, I could have just simply said, can I have breakfast? Or, hey, or just talk to my parents and say, hey, what do you want to order? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. don't even give a facial expression. Mm-hmm. That's just acts like you're, look, and you're looking at her, and then you look up to the menu, you decide, and you order. Neutral. And you can completely ignore it, mm-hmm. ignore it, but you have to know yourself yeah. and talk to yourself. Am I willing to do this? And am I okay with what's going to happen? Like, am I okay if they get really insulted if I don't, if I choose not to listen? But mm-hmm. again, it's that's not your problem. Decision. Other it's people, not my problem. Yeah, it's not your problem. Other people's feelings are not your concern. Exactly. And, and, and that's a really hard thing for girls because we always, we want to make nice. We don't want people's feelings to hurt, be hurt. And, you know, so we're conscious of our words and the impact that they have 
And there's something called the gentle truth versus the harsh truth, because sometimes there's a fine line between truth and hurt. So we want to we want to really be aware of that, you know, in terms of our words. And we're not responsible for that person's actions or feelings, um, you know, at the same time. And that, that yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. So you watched a lot of videos in the Prevent Sexual Assault Vault, it sounds yes, like. Yes, I did. <laughs> wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, so that's great. I created those because, um, you know, after the Me Too movement happened, I really just wanted to start creating those videos as a way of showing people how to use your verbal voice, but also how to use your body to prevent a sexual assault or sexual harassment and to keep that at bay. And and. Obviously, even your age at age eight, I wasn't thinking about people at age eight or girls at age eight, but, you know, I don't think there's any age that's too young to really start with that as you've, you've, um, you know, you've proven, like you said, you're, you're not yet at, at, at a stage where somebody's going to ask you to go get coffee, but that may not be true. I mean, at, at school or something, you know, can you go, can you go get me a knife to cut the birthday cake? And and maybe in that situation you would, but what if there's a situation where you don't want to serve the cake? You don't want to be the one serving the cake at a party. Actually, I'm actually homeschooled, so I don't have to go to Oh, you don't do have that. to go to school. Okay, yeah, but I'm, at a party, you know, at a party. Yeah. You get to go to parties? Yeah, I go to parties. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go to parties. <laughs> but, like, I agree. Um, I am planning to maybe going to high school and college, but that's probably it. <laughs> um. I agree. Like it, there's no age too young to start thinking about like, cause people can be touched at any moment, no That's matter how old they are. Right. Or insulted or, you know, asked to do something that we don't want. So it doesn't matter whether it's coffee, cake, you know, it just, it's anything that you don't want to do that you're asked to do that you have the right like, to say no. Like if someone asks like, Hey, can you go, get me a like can you go to the store for me like if it's like maybe your friend or like your roommate and they say can you go to the store for me and get me this 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 and this and you can simply say no thank you I don't want to go to the store you can go to the store if you like you can use my car mm -hmm. but no you don't I am not your personal sock Shopper, thank you though. <laughs> exactly. So you just made that your own, you know. You offered an alternative, you can use my car, and then you said you made it really clear, I'm not your personal shopper, girlfriend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't like, ask me again. Go so, yeah. Go, go to the Fry's website and ask to get a personal shopper, but you're no that's right. that's, so thank you. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's really important. I agree. Um so definitely make something your own. Like, don't make come from own. a... Yeah, because um, I agree with what you were saying earlier. There's a fine line between the truth and the hurt. Mm -hmm. Because the truth... It, people can obviously choose to get offended. But if you're speaking from your ego and you're trying to hurt them... um, I have trouble with this. Tell your ego pieces. I call them ego babies because... Ego babies? You know, ego uh -huh. babies, yeah. Because uh -huh. when I was really little, my mom said, um, hug your ego babies and mm. give them a hug. And she knew that if she said they would disappear, mm -hmm. I, I love cute things. So she said, mm -hmm. so she knew that if she said they're going to disappear, I wouldn't like that. So she said, they're going to go swim in a pool. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I... <laughs> And I imagine the inside of my body like a town. Like there's like the little eagle babies walking all all over. Like the red ones are the angry ones and the ones that you need to control. And the white ones are the nice and happy ones. Like they're like the angels kind of. Mm -hmm. and, and so you need to control those pieces that if they get assaulted or offended, control them. And, and if they want to like lash out, say, you're not going to speak. Go and say no, no, that's not acceptable. You're not going to ruin my friendship. You're not going to ruin my relationship with this person. Go find something else to do. Go control your own life, not mine. 
Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's such a great image that you have these, because we all have that. I think we all have the ego babies in our head, the ones that are like, you know, you should do this and you should do that. And and then the other ones are like, no, no, no. Right. And so we have those voices in our heads that we have to acknowledge, right? On both sides. Exactly. I agree. I even imagine like a town for my ego (laughs) and my town for my non ego. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. So that's a great that's a great image, I think. Yeah. yeah. I agree. So I so do you have any more questions and then Do you have any other advice for girls yourself? Like we've yeah. talked a lot about um, you know, maybe a situation that we haven't talked about where you can use verbal self-defense or you've got a creative way to handle a situation that you've that you've been in where um, it might be sticky or difficult or whatever with either your parents or your friends or a boy or a girl or whatever, or, you know, people who aren't even friends or strangers that you might want your um, people to know just to give them another tool. Like we've talked a lot about different verbal things and you reiterated that I said, you know, make it your own. Here's a start. You know, you can say this and then make it your own. There's an infinite number of responses and there's an infinite number of body responses too. You know, like when we talked about stepping back or stepping sideways, you know what I mean? Or stepping back and sideways. So, or jumping up. I mean, you know, we can use all dimensions. We don't, or crouching down, right? So like, what if somebody was like coming at you with a hug? There's no reason why you can't like crouch down and duck and make a like make a swivel around right you can easily like bend back like yeah you can bend back like like the matrix you know know? yeah so so there's like there's not just these these couple of responses like use your own body and your own imagination and try all these different things and try that's why i love the idea in the verbal self-defense course for girls called true shield we give them the language to start with and the and the and we t- and we talk about here are the exercises to do and here's what to say and here's how to handle it and then we give them the opportunity to play and to make it their own so then exactly. and that might be different every single time right so they get to try it one way and then they get to try it another way and they get to you know figure it out and say different things and and people have just said all kinds of things that I could never imagine myself one gal for example said um, she was a blonde and I said. Um, I was playing the the mean girl and I just said to her, you know, oh, you just think because you're a blonde and you're skinny that you're just better than everybody else, you know, so, and she said, oh, thank you, and turned around and walked back and I'm like, "Uh, no, and I said to her, I go, I didn't mean that as a compliment, you know, you, you know, you snotty, and she goes, she just, you know, had just already walked away and said, well, I took it like that. And I was like, well, that's brilliant. I go, that's I, brilliant. I do that all the time. Yeah. Um, when people call me weird or, uh-huh. like a, or like crazy. Because in my house, if people call me normal, I swear it's not a good thing to me. That's an insult. Yeah, it's like an yeah. insult to me. Mm-hmm. So in my house, mm-hmm. in my world, if people call me weird, that is literally the best yeah. compliment yeah. ever. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. if they call me weird, they're automatically my friend. Just, uh-huh. just saying. Uh-huh. And I agree. Like, my friends, they'll call me weird. And I'm like, thank you. Uh-huh. Like, uh-huh. that's so the nice totally thing you me all day. Yeah, yeah. So what can people say? Well, they can say, you know, well, I mean it as a compliment. Or I meant it to be mean. Or, you know, and you're, I, meant that, I meant that as an insult. And you go, oh, well. Oh, well. Oh, well. Yeah. yeah. Like, Cause I'll sometimes be acting like crazy, and then my friends will be like, "You're being really weird right now, Neva." I'm like, "Thanks, thank you." <laughs> like yeah. that's myself. Mm-hmm. That's me. Mm-hmm. And so, I agree. Don't take it if people are trying to insult you, and yeah. they're trying to get on your last nerve. Don't let them do that. Just yeah. say, just completely say, "Thank you," and walk away. Mm-hmm. Because, mm-hmm. like, if people don't accept you for you, like I say, people don't accept you for you, go find some new friends. <laughs> right. Oh, that's so true. Yep. yep. Even yep. if you've been friends with them since you were going to kindergarten, 
you, if they're not accepting you, you, you for you, go find some new friends yeah. or simply just walk away. And even if like, again, use the, the fence mechanisms. If someone goes in to hug you and you don't want to hug them, you can shake their hands mm-hmm. or go talk, go walk away. And you can say no thank you and walk mm-hmm. away because you don't want to stay there. Mm-hmm. Or else it gives yeah. them it gives them the um advantage to be able to like talk to you and try to hug you again. And it gives them the advantage to try to say, You didn't let me hug you. You're the worst person ever. Ah! You know? So you don't wanna let them do that. You let them control their um, they're like ego pieces because, like you said, that's not yeah. yours to deal with. That's right. Simply walk away and move on with your day. Go talk to your friends. That's that's exactly right. So that is great advice, and thank you for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm excited. So, um, I have one last question, and then we need to do funny FaceTime. Okay. okay. Did we talk about my website too, where people can go and find the, so at prsecrets.com and you can go under free goodies. So that's where the videos are that Neva has been talking about. And there's, yeah, so there's a lot of videos in there. And then there's the course itself, the True Shield Verbal Self-Defense course for girls. So if if anybody wants that for their school or their homeschool, you know, you guys have um, homeschool um, groups, right? Where you, you get together, there's a whole bunch of, homeschoolers that get together in groups too. So yeah, what, that sometimes happens. It does. I, I know it's different. We have some in our, in our neighborhood where they, <clears throat> they have more, um, they get together in groups as well as home, but wherever you are, whether it's a school or organization that's available to all of you at, um, on prsecrets.com. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely go check that out. It's awesome. So we're going to make a funny face. <laughs> okay. So we have to make a funny okay. face in three, two, one. I have no idea how that's going to turn out. It's going to be funny. That's so undignified. Okay, I like making a scary face as well. So this is mine. That is kind of scary. Oh, that is kind of scary. It's kind of scary <laughs> and scary at the same time. Yeah. All right, so would you like to join me in the sign-off? Uh, yes, I forgot what we were going to do in the sign-off. Okay, so I'm going to say, remember, kids, we all have superpowers, and you and I will both say together, we can change the world. Oh, right. Okay, good. Yeah, that was so long ago. <laughs> like you, I know you told me in the beginning, but I totally forgot. But yeah, okay, great. Remember, kids, we all have superpowers, and... We can change, we can change the, world. the world. Wait, let's do it one more time because that wasn't in unison. Okay. Remember, kids, we all have superpowers and we can, we change, can change the world. The world. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. This Thank you. So that was great. Really it fun. Was. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for listening to the Superpower Up podcast, Superpower Kids edition. Go now to superpowerkids.com and discover your superpowers today. Hey.